guys, welcome to the channel and welcome to the video. If you're new here, my name is Brian and this is Hog Shooter Hot Rods. Yeah, the green hog shooter up there himself driving the hot rod. So I've had a, a few people ask and like it's been a long time since I've actually done a video about or on or doing anything to our old blue 72 C10 truck. And uh, you can see here she is in the shop. Got ignore that right there, but got a lot of stuff going on. Old Blue's a pretty cool truck. It came out really good. And, you know, it's been quite a journey. I've seen this truck for a long, long time. And I wanted to tell you guys the story of the truck and what I've done to kind of make it a drivable, usable vehicle. So let's dive in and we'll talk about this old thing here. So like the first thing that's kind of the most notable is, well, it's a short bed Chevrolet C10 truck. These things have gone crazy in popularity. Um, I've owned a few of them, not like dozens, but a few of them. And uh, I've always liked this truck. I've owned newer, I've owned older trucks, and uh, this just seems to be kind of the happy place where where I like what uh, advances they'd made with the trucks and things that you didn't have to upgrade. I mean, the brakes are on the firewall. The, uh, the electrical in them is pretty decent and they have good weather strip and everything is available for one of these for sure. So that's a, a big perk for wanting to build one. Plus they just look cool, right? So we have... We have those favorites out there for sure. So the beds of these trucks are always pretty beat up. So this one's got a bed liner in it. And it's kind of faded. You can see over here, it's kind of faded a little bit. Man, if you just use silicone on the, the bed liner and material itself, it'll bring that shine a lot of the way back and get rid of that faded look. When I say silicone, like Armor All or something like that, not like RTV. Uh, you can see in this truck, uh, we did kind of a, oh yeah, a butcher job cutting this bed into a short bed. We cut it in between the two cross members and man, this is what I saw. The first thing that I saw on the internet, I really hadn't seen a, a lot of people sharing how they did this cleaner. Um, there is a much better way to do it. And I have another C10 that it, we did the bed that way, much, much happier with it. But this bed literally, when we took the truck apart, I took the entire bed and fully disassembled it and we laid this bed floor on the shop floor and I took a four by four and a sledgehammer just to kind of get it where it didn't have the old pickup wave to it. Yeah, it was pretty rough. So if one was worth cutting down into a short bed, this is definitely a good candidate for it because uh, you're not going to hurt. So let's start kind of back at the beginning with the truck. You know, I had a a buddy that I, I grew up with and uh, we did a lot of stuff together. His mom and dad got divorced and uh, he had to move. Well, I mean, he moved with one of his parents. So uh, he ended up in Kansas City and living with his dad. And his dad was always a car guy, but he was really into Dodge and Plymouth stuff. Oh, 59 Sport Fury was uh, Ron's favorite. So uh, Ron bought this truck with his son, Devin, and they were going to build this dude. And like you buy a cheap project, I think it was 1987 when they bought it and they gave like $300 for it at a big swap meet in central Oklahoma called the Chickasha Swap Meet. So there's a video where I went there on my channel. Um, anyway, they bought this truck way back then and the plan was to make it into a low rider. So get her down in the weeds, right? At the time, all the, the fad was to do away with all the lights, get rid of all the trim, smooth it out. You know, everybody was into doing that. So they, uh, they did, they welded up all the trim holes and everything. The old blue 72 is actually a Cheyenne super truck. They got all its trim taken off of it. So I did not want to drill holes back. So I just, this is what the way I did it. And I'm happy with it. seems like a lot of people really like it. Um, anyway, it was a rough project. So they couldn't really hurt it. Um, they welded up the stuff on there. They put a roll pan on the back and you can see no more roll pan back here. They bought the smooth version of the tailgate, but I bought the letters to put on there to make it look more like one that uh, was embossed. 
They left the gas tank behind the cab, but I moved that, so I've got my gas filler over here inside of the bed. Crawl underneath the back of this thing and kind of look what we have going on here. So, you can see up under here, there's a gas tank where uh, originally there was not one. You know, you kind of mount these in the Ford Pinto position at the very back of the vehicle. Yeah, I'm just kidding. It fits back here really well. Uh, this is a Suburban tank, so it's a monster. It like barely fits in here. It is stuffed. Now, I built a 12 bolt uh, truck rear end for this. It's got a uh, Posi carrier in it, 373 gears in the back. We took a sway bar off, I don't know, 2003, something like that. I welded the mounts to the bottom of the shock mounts on my rear end. Um, that made it nice. So now we got sway bars front and rear on it. This truck is kind of weird for one of these C10s because it's got leaf springs. They made them that way. You just had to special order a Chevrolet or I think most of the GMCs came with them. So yeah, stuff's pretty clean under the old truck. Just, you know, it gets driven. Those leaf springs look like crap. And the U-bolts, eh, I think they're okay. Yeah, no drippy drips on the floor or anything, though. That's what we like out of these old vehicles, right? We get them done, and they, they're good. One weird thing with this, with the leaf springs and the sport bumper on the back, these brackets right here, they were a nightmare to get to fit in there. I had to build nut plates and everything else. It's because I put the gas tank there. You just can't get to any of that stuff. The one thing that did happen with the truck, my buddy's uh, dad, he was like very good at keeping track of paperwork and receipts and all those things. And uh, when we pulled the rear or the frame of the vehicle out of the back of their property, uh, the back tires were just sliding on it. They wouldn't turn. And he was like, well, the brakes are probably locked up. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's, that's probably true. Then we get it up to his shop and I pull a wheel off. There's no brakes on it. No, no hardware inside, just a drum on there. I'm like, uh, Ron, I don't think the brakes are locked up. So then I pulled the rear cover off and just a big snot ball of rust fell out of it. Yeah, there were cuss words said because he had receipts for spending $700 on the rear end, rebearing and everything. And then, uh, yeah, I redid all of it with a different rear end because that housing was no good at all. So here's uh, the file that I inherited with the old blue truck. And, oh, believe me, I've added quite a bit to it. Um... Oh yeah, and I inherited all the pictures apparently with the truck. So here's my my buddy's dad, Ron, and he's inside of his shop there, proudly leaning up against a shiny, freshly painted chassis for a C10 truck, which is cool. Here's the old truck bed out in their yard, standing up on the end so they can clean it all up. And then, you know, you gotta have those bodywork pictures of stuff as you're going through and you're trying to straighten them all up and yeah got a lot of a lot of different progress stuff but just randomness kind of but underside of the bed's primed even inside of the bed yeah frame as it's primed all the wiring oh here's something that's cool about this truck see this green piece in the firewall there yeah you can see it in this picture too so these trucks have all kinds of stuff done to them through the years. This one had a uh, 4BT Cummings with the valve cover sitting back inside of it and PTO driving a winch and just like used as a, uh, a beast of burden there. Here's my buddy Devin painting, wearing sandals, yeah. Super fun stuff, man. Just lots of pictures, lots of memories. This is how close the old boys were to driving her around. Got a motor and transmission in the chassis. And, uh, yeah, just sitting there waiting to take off. All right, so inside of the folder, you always have to have your huge stack of O'Reilly's receipts. You got your LMC truck there. Something from, like, a Geo place, Ray Adams and Belton. Geo, Eastwood. You got to have your receipt from Pete and Jake's Hot Rod Shops. And then here's one for a company doing springs. So just crazy. Here's uh, how good a job that Mr. Ron did. He had like everything laid out here. And yeah, 4103.96. Don't forget that. 
And I see the rebuilt 700R4, he paid a 700 bucks for doing that. Yeah, and it never got used. And guess what? I spent another 500 on it, having it gone back through and freshened up. I don't see anything on here for his rear differential, though. It's all in alphabetical order, so it ought to be. Yeah, it's not either in alphabetical. Whatever. So you got that sheet. And then here is a uh, bill of sale, I guess, from a guy from Lawton, Oklahoma, selling this thing to him. Uh, Ron gave him a hundred bucks down and then sold it for 350 total. So super cheap old truck. Uh, most of these receipts, this is a U-Haul receipt from where they rented a U-Haul trailer to tow this thing back home. And uh, yeah, it's in uh, way back there. Dang it, I saw the date just a minute ago. Anyway, it's like uh, back to 90s, early 90s. I thought they bought it in the late 80s, but I don't know. Getting a lot of receipts from 96 and in there. And here's one last picture that was provided with my stuff. You got this dude here with the uh, primered up fenders there. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, that's kind of how we got the old blue 72 truck in a lot of pieces with a lot of parts. Ron didn't like uh, GM products. He liked Mopar stuff. So I bought all of the GM stuff that he had. There was a couple of cabs there, a whole bunch of miscellaneous sheet metal, some stuff that probably should have went straight to the scrap yard. But, you know, you keep those things around and if you don't use them in a few years, then you can scrap them. So we're getting her ready to go to the Starbirds car show. Got the Rupees out, knocking the funk off the paint, polishing it up, pulled the air cleaner off, put new plug wires on. Got the old ones here. I mean, literally, guys, uh, when I pulled this motor out of the old truck that it, that it was in, it went in with plug wires, intake carburetor, every piece off of it. And we've been driving it like that. I mean, it runs good, so why change stuff that runs good so when i went and got the truck it came with these beautiful wheels here and four flat tires so uh to get it where i could roll the old thing around i put me some goodyear wranglers on there because they were on sale and uh, these wheels have just kind of become my wheels i put on an old truck just to have it where i can roll it around and it's all five hole I hate them because of these lug nut design where you got to like line everything up just perfectly and they're unilug. Uh, yeah, so we use them for that and they work good. They're all road good tires. I mean, we can drive it around with them for sure, but I like the look of the, uh, the old rally wheels on the truck, right? They're super nice compared to, well, something that looks like it belonged on the General Lee. All right, so... K5 Blazer. Hmm, I think somebody's been here before, right? So this is the truck that the motor for the blue truck came out of. We built it several times. My grandpa's old truck it started as a two wheel drive. We turned it into a four wheel drive and the dang dirt daubers are just taking over. You can see if you're missing that chain, there it is. It's right there holding the transmission up because it's a fresh trans in here. And who knows, we may end up swapping us another small block into this. I mean, radiator's still in it. Everything's good to go. We just need a, a power plant. All right, so out here. Yeah, don't you like those rally wheels better than the old turbines on the truck? I think they look good. They're white letter in because they're different. They're Coopers on the back and some other like Corsa or something on the front. Had to do that. So when we got this truck, there was nothing inside of anything. All the nuts and bolts and screws were taken out of it. And it was just bare parts sitting on a boat trailer. So I had to do a lot of hunting and searching. And that's part of the fun of building old cars, right? Is the, the looking around and the gathering of all of that old stuff around. So we acquired a couple of different trucks so that we could get all the pieces we needed to build this one. And made some friends in the process and just learned a ton about 72 model Chevrolet pickups. One thing I think is crazy about these trucks is like the doors, they have this one screw right here in those late 71 and 72 year. And then these door panels, they're like 
Kind of hard to come up with, super cool. You can buy every piece for this truck, but it's fun to get some other things. There's videos on the channel of installing this seat, putting these door panels together, putting that radio in. I mean, lots of different videos of the truck. truck she drives super nice it's not loud inside or anything because we got it all fat matted up or kill mat one of those sound dampening materials in here and uh, yeah it's just a good old cruising truck there's your nice shop right there kids look at that thing nice old house over here too I like the pond I've always loved that place and just a bunch of other prairie. A few cows up here. Good place to sit and call coyotes right in here where this brush is until they built that big house back there. And now this is all somebody's personal playland. Uh, over on this side, we still got lots of cows and cow pasturing. that posse on the channel as well so i said tons of good videos on the old truck on the channel i really appreciate you guys watching my videos and subscribing and you know we try to build a community here you let me know what you guys want to see next i've got a a few different builds going a lot of stuff that's just uh you know, collision repair kind of paint and body sort of a bunch of car shows looking at doing this summer so hey we're gonna take this old blue truck out and just uh, enjoy the heck out of it I mean it's a fun old truck to drive around so you guys take it easy and uh, yeah we'll catch you on the next video okay have a good day Yep, we did fill that hole, right? Let's get back away from this thing a little bit. I have a terrible tendency of not getting the whole vehicle in the frame. black tailgate that we put the letters on it to make it look cool yeah it's a cool old truck
Somebody's having way too much fun. So, there you go. Little tire spinning, little driving, fun time in the old blue pickup. I like to tell the story of it. I mean, my, my buddy and his dad bought it and uh, man, I, I hate that they didn't get to finish it together, but you know, at least somebody got to finish it and uh, tell its story, you know? this thing was sold to somebody that didn't know it'd just be another old truck it probably would have got parted out actually because it was pretty uh pretty sparse on the little building pieces of everything just had a lot of the sheet metal there